Hi, welcome. I'm at home today. The weather isn't so good. It's raining. Uh, it's been raining for two days now and uh, but I can't complain because we have had some lovely weather recently and it does mean I don't have to water in all the new plants that have been planted out. So yes, firstly I just want to say a big welcome to all our new subscribers. We've had a bit of an influx lately and you are all very welcome as are those of you who are already subscribed. Um, our last video has had a lot of views and a lot of likes and a lot of comments and I really am grateful to you all. I don't know what's made that become so popular, but I am I'm here for it, I'm grateful. So yes, thank you so much. So, in the last week and a half, Mark and I have been to the allotment together a couple of times. Um, so we've got quite a few bits done. Mark's got a lot of the, um, the, the <laughs> the hard work done <laughs> and I've got some of the plant stuff done and um, we haven't got as far as I would have liked again but you know again it's uh, sometimes I am very prone to underestimating how much effort something will take or how much time something will take to do so yeah anyway I'll show you the videos of what we've been doing and where we've been and uh, I hope you enjoy and I'll see you back here at the end boy and he has finished these compost bins he's put two new timbers on that left one there so now we can we've got a higher level and yeah it's all good we've been putting some of the um fresh manure that's been delivered to the site on there so that we can get that up to a high temperature which will hopefully kill the weed seeds and any weed roots and we've brought some composted manure here so that we can so i can put that on those beds and get them prepped for the squash because squash are hungry Mark is just generally tidying up today, fixing and tidying up. He's going to be sorting those timbers out into sort of usable and, and not usable. He's been working on this compost bin and he's going to carry on today. This is really big. I don't think the camera really shows you how big it is. It's about 1.5 metres deep by 1.5 metres across. And yes, it's got a lot of ivy growing into it. Um, And we're going to put the turf that we've dug up at home here and that will rot down. And so next year it should be really nice. Nice composty soil <laughs> in there. So yeah, he's got lots to do today and so have I. So while he's been tidying up, I've been planting out brassicas. And uh, yes, um, even though it's a big space, you don't get as many in as you hope you will. I've tried to keep them in a bit from the um, mesh so that the, because the, the butterflies will lay their eggs through the mesh. And I've been using that potato bag as a kneeling mat, which as you can see, was very effective <laughs> so yeah so they're all in and they're all looking okay some are very small and I would have liked to have grown them on a bit a bit longer um but those larger ones at the back they are the cauliflowers that my dad gave me and uh, they are the cabbages that my dad gave me there so the smaller ones are the shop bought ones that I bought they're my purple sh sprouting broccoli I need to get canes in to support these because they will get tall um yeah so that's looking all right. Fingers crossed. I expect we will get a bit of slug damage in here. It's just keeping the cabbage whites out that we need to do. So yeah, fingers crossed for some Christmas sprouts, guys. Right, so the brassica cage has been watered, planted. Mark's on with that uh, compost bin and he seems to be clearing stuff. He's cleared all this down, which is great as well. So I'm going to um, put this on top of here. It's very gravelly because we, we didn't realise we were going to use it and we put a lot of gravel from the, the paths on there. Um, but it'll, it'll, increase, it'll help the drainage. Um, so I'm going to put this on. It's very windy so I'll just if you can't hear me very well. And then I think before we go I will clear this bed because these cabbages, we'll have a look but I'm not sure we're going to get anywhere with those. But cabbages will not be going on the compost bins because of the club root so yeah we'll see what the roots are like as well and we can have a good look can't we that's exciting look at that new strimmer Ooh, little spesh we love a little spesh don't we <laughs> so i've just emptied six bags of comp of the manure onto there i've saved another three because i'm going to put them on here 
because I'm going to use both these beds for squash because I've got quite a few varieties. So I'm just going to clear this and uh, there is a little bit of uh, spring greens we can use there so that's nice, I'll take that home tonight. And um, yeah, so I'm just going to get all this dug out and weeded. We've decided to just fix the cage up this year. We'll get new netting next year because there's so much to do and we really underestimated how much time it would take um, to get these jobs done. Mark is sort of doing jobs that are sort of a make, do and mend while we, while we get growing really. So what he's done as well here, you just swap hands, got mucky gloves on, is because the flags were all laid up against this bed and I'm going to need access to it for planting in about a month, he's just laid the flags down. So they're not set down properly, they're just laid down, but they're just, it's just a better way to store them really and it's really useful to have this clean area now to, uh, to access this bed. He's also very kindly laid me a path down the, uh, the brassica cage as well. This is uh, falling apart a little bit, he's just pushed it to the side, it needs bracing so that it's, it goes more sort of uh, that way because when you do that and you move it he pushed on it and asked me to try the door and it, it, it opened easier he's also cleared a load of the weeds by the uh, the bottom of the door so that it opens easier that's great that if, if I, <laughs> when you just open it enough to get in there it's okay it's moved all this rotten wood so we've got a lot there fixed up the brassica cages quite a bit done there aren't you fella? Yeah. I've sort of half weeded this bed, I'm going to get the rest out and then I'm going to put the manure on and uh, yeah. Okay, so let me show you this root here. So this is a cabbage, one of the cabbages that I've been growing and these, can you see those nodules on the roots there? That is club root, that's what it looks like and that's what it does to the plant and that's why it stunts the growth. So you can see that they've, they've not formed heads or anything. Also, they've been picked to death by the pigeons as well. I have managed to uh, harvest some for spring greens, which will be nice and I will eat those tonight. Um, I'm not going to put the roots in the compost bins. I'm going to cut the roots off like I have with these. Oh, not that one, these. Um, I'll compost the tops that aren't edible. And uh, that's a good example there, look this nodule here that's the uh, that's the club root parasite so yeah so I will just put these in the waste bin I'll just take these home and put them in the uh, general waste and um, but I will compost the tops That bed has been weeded and mulched with the uh, very stinky um, but well rotted manure. It smells like eggs. It smells like it's been in a bag sweating is what it smells like, which is what it has been doing. And this bed has been done as well. I will rake it out more. It's very uh, lumpy. Just as a little side note, do you remember how we tied in this rambling rose? sideways now can you see how all those shoots have come off and gone upwards so that's how we're going to get more flowers the uh, if you train them horizontally it will send up shoots towards the sun and uh, yeah you'll get more flowers which is what we want and it looks like we might get a good show this year now that one I haven't done a great job on because it was a bit of a reach to get it there but this one sticking out here not today we might, mm, maybe not. We'll see. We'll see. We could maybe train this one a little bit somewhere. Oh yeah, that's quite flexible. So we might be able to train this one in to go maybe a bit further. Oh, further down. We don't really want them crossing, but if it's gonna, yeah, that'll be fine. We'll do that. We'll do that another time though, because Mark is just using the strimmer. 
I don't know if you can hear me very well because of how uh, how windy it is now. But it seems like it might rain soon. Okay, so the first thing we've got is this bed, which we mulched the other day. Um, obviously the nettles are coming up, so you can see where I've missed missed the, um, the roots. But I expect this because there's so much in here and there's been so much in here. We've got seedlings coming up as well, but I'll hoe those off and bindweed. This is the big compost bin where we've put loads of turf from our garden. Managed to get some glass in there. Hmm. Yeah. So, we've brought some pallet collars up as well. Gave these to my parents uh, last year and they didn't use them, so I've taken them back. <laughs> they gave me them back. And so, this area here, these three beds, you can see the third one there. Obviously they're very weedy and overgrown now. The garlic's doing all right, but I need to get that poppy out of there and there's some cleavers in there as well. So this is the asparagus bed, but the asparagus has not come up, so it's dead. So that's okay, it's a planting opportunity. Um, so we'll see how, I'm just sort of looking at how we could fill this space with pallet collars. Because I do want to make the paths a little bit wider because they are quite, if I just, they are quite narrow and it all needs to come up because we can't get to these buttercu um, yeah, buttercups, the roots. We, we can cut them off and we can pull up a bit, but we can't really get them up. And there's brambles and bindweed and things like that. So, I mean, obviously these things are all going to come back. We're never going to get rid of them all together. And that's fine because we don't necessarily want to get rid of all these things, do we? But we just need to be a little bit better spaced out so there's a bit more space between because there is plenty of growing space here i don't want to do, do, remove too much growing space but we do have a lot it's a good sized plot it's about 180 square meters so yeah look at all these dandelion heads dandelion clocks honestly and the water cups are annoying but they do look pretty at this point in time so yeah so mark is just been bringing all the timber from home that we've got spare that we want to use here he's just organizing that now i've brought up tomatoes and cucumbers ready to plant out in the polytunnel which is absolutely sweltering in there it's ridiculous and this is the other bed i mulched as well the other day which things are coming back through as well this isn't as weedy because this has been grown in regularly there's some plants there that i've brought and there's mark doing what he does best Uh, I've just been pulling out bolted spinach and lettuce ready to get this area for planting. We're going to take that down and take this out. Then my potatoes are coming up. They can go outside now. So we'll find somewhere for them today as well. I just need to get this ground prepped, weeded, and then think about how I'm going to support the tomatoes. Because my dad did it with strings from this from this wire the other day but I um but he didn't like it the other day last year I mean but he didn't like it and he wanted to go back to doing canes so we may do canes but there is room on here for 25 tomatoes you could get more in but we don't want to cram them in too um too close and risk blight so I don't know I don't know what I'm gonna do and then at this side generally he has cucumbers so I think I'm gonna do the same I do have some aubergines on their way as well, but I've got 10 cucumbers. They're not looking the best, they're very leggy. So I don't know, um, I might sow some backups just in case. I do have some seeds left available, so. Um, and some of the squash hasn't germinated, so I think I'm gonna just re-sow a couple of those that, that are the more important ones that I grow like a cheeky curry, I really want to grow that one. So I'm going to carry on clearing this area, get the weeds out, get it raked over and level, and then we'll, uh, we'll get planted. 
Right, so I've got what I've got of my polytunnel crops, except the cucumbers right now. Um, some peppers, chilies, and um, tomatoes. These are not all the tomatoes. Um, mine are not doing so well that I've sown, so most of these are either given to me or bought. I'm going to carry on growing on some of mine because I really want some plum tomatoes. Um, but I have a few different varieties here, but I have room for 25. So what I need to do is see how many I've got here. And then what I'm going to do when I get home is pot up the tomatoes into some new compost and select a few. And then a few more than I need, obviously, just in case. And then grow them on a little bit and hopefully we'll be able to plant them out in the next week or two. Because they are only quite small. Uh, these are not massive. Some of them are definitely ready to go in the ground. So, yeah. There's a melon there as well, and then there'll be some cucumbers, so I need to think about that. This side needs to uh, come down. And top tip, never store wood chip in your polytunnel if you don't want to end up with a big mess of wood chip like that. Still so many, so many tomato skins from last year. So, and I've just seen the biggest spider I've ever seen. In fact, I think he's running across there now. I think I can see him. So if you don't like spiders, look away now. Where are you, Paul? There he is. I think he should be contributing towards the plot then. What do you think? He's big enough. Sorry if you don't like spiders. Okay, the spider's gone. You can look back now. <laughs> well, there are quite a few in here. There's one eating a wasp there. I'm not fussed about spiders, but that guy made me jump. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place these out, see how many tomatoes I've got here, place them out. We sort of do them too deep along this side, sort of uh, brickwork style, so like one there, one there, one there, one there, obviously that's not quite a space so far apart as that. And yes, I think I'm going to use canes just because I think it'll be easier and we can tie the canes into that wire at the top so that they're supported. I think that's how he used to do it. I'm not sure. We'll have a go, eh? So, as the varieties I've bought are completely different to the varieties I've sown and grown from seed, I thought I would oh. talk you through some. So, my parents were at a garden centre the other day. I said my plum tomatoes weren't doing well, so could they find any? Um, pick some up if they could um, find one. So, this one is Lucinda F1, baby plum. I thought I said P1 then. <laughs> um, that is new baby plum variety with good vigour and disease resistance. So, yeah, that's uh, hopefully it's a vine tomato, doesn't specify. Then we've got Floridity F1 again, um, baby plum variety. So, yeah, cordon variety, that's good, useful. Um, we've got is it Cornu des Andes? Um, and I think that's a larger plum variety. Um, deep red pepper shape and are ideal for making sauces, which is exactly what I was looking for. These two at the front were from my local garden centre and they weren't labelled. One's Rapunzel and one's Honeycomb, but I do not know which is which. And it doesn't matter. It'll present itself when they start to fruit. Then we've got some good old reliable ones. We've got Alicante, I've got one of those. We've got Moneymaker. And then I've got two Elsa Craigs. I'm just gonna get up. And two Gardener's Delights. Then we've got four Shirley's that my dad's grown and given me. And then I've got two Gigantomos. So there's gonna be some space because there's room for 25 here. Um, so I'm going to, um, whew, sorry, I'm out of breath. So I'm going to see how many I can grow on from home and uh, I'll pop them up today and see how well they do. And then I've also got this one, which is Roma, which is a really good one, but it is a bush, tall bush variety. So I'm going to see where this will fit once I've done, because this needs a bit more space around it. I'm hoping to put it in here. We'll just see how much space we've got because the cucumbers, melons, chilies and aubergines are going to all be along this side. So it might end up in a pot in the greenhouse, but the chilies might end up in a pot in the greenhouse. That might be a good idea for the chilies. So 
I will just see how I feel when I do it. But the cucumbers are definitely growing in here. And the aubergines I want in the ground in here as well. So, yes. Let's, uh... <sighs> it's so hot. I'm really struggling today. Mark's there busy working away outside doing a great job. And I'm in here going, oh, it's too warm. I'm too tired. I'm too whingy. Yeah. Oh, it's so nice out here. And when you're trying to work and somebody points a camera in your face all the time. <laughs> all the time. All the time. Now, a couple of the tomatoes, as I was doing them, realised one of them, uh, one of the gigantomos, had actually got a triple stem, so it split off at the sides and they were growing, the side shoots were growing very low down and I need to take them off. So I've done that and I've just popped them in water because if I give these a good soak, get them rehydrated, if I then put those into compost, they will root and they'll be a clone of the parent plant. I don't know why I'm doing it because I don't need any more, but the Gigantomo are supposed to produce really large beefsteak tomatoes. So I like the idea of that. Oh, there's a little green fly there that I'm sorry is going to, uh, is going to disappear now. Bye bye, green fly. Right, so they're in. But now we've got to go pick the kids up. So I didn't get any of the plants planted at this side except the Roma tomato. And uh, we've got to go pick the kids up now. So I'll have to come back first thing in the morning. I'm going to come back early because it is just too hot now. And uh, yes, giving everything a really good water. Mark's got quite a lot done. He's put a back board across here to keep the branches and everything from falling on the bed. So that'll keep that tidy. I've put the potatoes outside. He's brought all this extra timber that we'll use here. And yeah, you've done lots of stuff. What else have you done? What? What have you been doing today? Mm. Just like that. Just my dad. Oh, he's shy. Look, because I've asked him to talk. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he's finished this. He's put this backboard in here. <coughs> Excuse me. Brought the pallet collars. Still haven't planted those out. That's a job for tomorrow. We have to bring the strimmer up, aren't we? And uh, mm. trim the weeds off to just to tidy it up. And then we can start clearing them properly. So I'm really glad that the tomatoes are in. I wish I'd have got a chance to get the cucumbers in. I was going to do that yesterday and I couldn't do that yesterday for other reasons, but then I was going to do it today and I can't go today because I'm waiting in for a delivery that needs to be signed for and I don't know what time it's coming. So hoping it's not coming while I'm on the school run. So yes, so that's what we've got and um, still need to get the peppers in. I've got some jalapenos and aubergines coming as plugs and they're coming at the end of this month. So I want to save space for those. Um, but I have got that greenhouse, so I can put things in pots in there. My dad used to grow his chilies on the potting bench in the greenhouse in pots, so that's an option as well. Um, I don't have many, you know, I've got a, I think I've got a hot pepper and I've got two, um, a, hot, a, a chilli pepper and I've got two sweet peppers. Um, I need to look those varieties up and see how big they're going to get and how much space I really want to give them. I definitely want my aubergines in the ground in the polytunnel ideally there's 20 tomatoes 25 tomato spaces on one side and once that structure is that hotbed structure is removed there's going to be room for 25 tomato sized plants however i've planted the roma which will take up more space because it's a bush variety i will give that more space because bush varieties are more likely to get blight because you're you know you're not taking those those extra branches out um so there's not as it's not as good for airflow um, so I want to make sure it's got plenty of space around it. The aubergines will take up a decent amount of space, like a wide amount of space. So I'm not going to be planting those. I may plant them deep, but they'll have to be further apart. The cucumbers will be planted at a similar spacing to the tomatoes. There's 10 of those. And then there's the melon, which will also get a similar amount of space. It's only a small variety. I don't know what variety it is, but the guy at the nursery says it's, says it's a small cantaloupe. So... Who knows, eh? Who knows? I really don't like not knowing what variety things are. Are you like that? Do you have to know the variety of everything you grow? I do. Garden at home, flowers, doesn't matter what it is. I have got to know 
what I'm growing and the things that I don't know the variety of it, it's an endless source of frustration I don't know why I'm this way <laughs> I don't know why I'm this way oh dear anyway so thank you so much for watching I would love it if you're not already subscribed if you would consider hitting that button and also hit the notification bell to be notified the next time we upload our uploads are becoming a bit more regular i'm hoping to make sure we get one every week if there's a day of the week that you think would be the best for uploads let me know because i'm really undecided i know a lot of you are in the uk but a lot of you are overseas as well particularly in america so hello international uh, viewers um so yeah leave me a comment say hi drop me a like if you would be so kind and i will see you back here next time bye for now